I just finished scanning the last frames of two Cinestill 800T rolls that I developed last weekend and while I was scanning and looking at the first results I got so fascinated by some of the shots that I spontaneously decided to make a video about them. What's up everyone, my name is Marcus from DM Photography and in today's video I'm going to show you a couple of night shots that I took here in Zurich on Cinestill 800T. Earlier this year I bought three rolls of Cinestill 800T but I never really got a chance to really try it out and, and figure out how the film behaves in different situations. So now that the days are getting shorter um, I decided to take my tripod to work and afterwards go out to downtown Zurich and find a couple of cool locations to try out the film under different light conditions. Cinestill 800T is a tungsten balanced film so ideal for nighttime photography especially with artificial light. Downtown Zurich is not that bright and full of neon lights like New York for example or Tokyo. Nonetheless I think I found a couple of interesting spots to try out the film and learn it. Learn how it behaves before I go to one of those destinations where this film would be absolutely ideal for. But before I introduce you to the shots that I took I want to first show you this here. I realized on both of the films that I developed that the first couple of frames have these weird orange flares and I would like to know from you guys, do you also see this when you shoot the Cinestill 800T? So for me it was on both of the films that I developed. I don't think that I did anything wrong during development because I also developed Portra 400 and Fuji Pro 400H and on none of those films I saw these weird flares. So something weird is going on with these Cinestills. Maybe I was just unlucky with the two rolls that I shot last week or maybe generally the three rolls that I bought a while back. But uh, let me know in the comments below maybe if you have the same experience, if there's anything I can do to avoid this in the future. But um, for now, I think the first couple of shots I just had to throw away basically. All the shots that you're about to see in this video were shot on my Leica M6 with the 50mm APO Sumicron lens. So let's get into it. The first shot is a very typical street scene. What you see here is a little bit of like an orange glow on the street. This comes from the orange yellowish light that we have here in Zurich. So the street lights are not white light. That's why we have this yellow cast in this picture. I really like the mood of the Cinestill 800T in the situations. What you also see here and what is very dominant are these um, halos around the red lights that you see here in the picture, be it from the traffic lights or for example from the cars. I found this also in other shots that I took with the Cinestill 800T and you'll see a couple of other examples later. So this looks like this is a characteristics of this film. I personally really really like it. It gives me this movie feeling to it. The feeling that this film gives in this kind of situation is definitely completely different than if I would have taken this shot with my digital Leica MD. The detail that I like the most in this shot is the person that sits on the bench and the taxi in the background that shines its headlights directly towards the camera. Let's now take a look at the next shot. This shot here was all about trying out the dynamic range of the film. We have these dark, dark shadows on top and we have the super bright white light of the shop and we have the dark foreground where the fruit is. I really wanted to see how well the highlights are kept with this film and I must say I was really, really impressed. I really like how this film renders the blue of the sign above the shop and also the yellow tones. What we also see in this shot is the yellow color cast that I was mentioning just previously in the other shot which comes from the street lights here in Zurich. I think I could easily have removed it with Lightroom but I just wanted to show you how the film looks like if you don't do major edits on it. Next up is a shot from a garage. I found myself in this garage with white neon light and a lot of grey concrete. Also here the film held up quite well I must say. Uh, it's not the most exciting shot but for me nonetheless very very interesting to see how the film behaved in this kind of situation. 
And also while walking, I found the following scene. So there were some workers who were pumping out water from the sewers here, and they had this truck with this aluminum or metallic side panels. And when I saw it in the reflections of the light there, I knew that I had to take a shot of this. This subject also shows how multifaceted this film is. I personally must say I really like how it renders the metallic look and the reflections of the light. Also what we see in this shot is again those halos around the light bulbs that we've seen in the first shot as well. The reflections, the highlights and the shadows are quite balanced in this shot, so this film really gives me the confidence to continue shooting these types of subjects. The next shot is maybe more the typical shot that you would expect from someone shooting this film. This Cinestill 800T cliche shot, maybe I would say, shows how well this film renders colors, especially bright colors against dark backgrounds. So this is the typical shot that you would often see people using the Cinestill 800T for. It's smooth, it makes use of reflections, it uses glass, all of these ingredients are very typical for a Cinestill 800 T shot. The next one is an interesting one. I was at an exhibition here in Zurich and then I suddenly saw this jar with green earplugs and this spotlight coming from the top shining down on the floor and this artificial fog and I knew that I had to take the shot and find out how this film holds under these circumstances. What impressed me the most about this shot was how the spotlight which hit a very light brown, yellowish, I would say, wooden floor reflected on the bottom of the table and made it look like the spotlight was going through the table. And I knew this would be very complicated for the film when I took the shot, but the scan shows also here that the dynamic range is amazing and the colors are just rendered so perfectly. It's exactly how I remember this scene. It is maybe a little bit more yellow, but this comes of course from the film. Looking at the shot retrospectively, I think that I like the shot like this even more than how it looked like in real. The next shot is a typical street scene, I would say. I was continuing my walk through Zurich and then I stumbled across this scene. So here again we have these light bulbs that produce those halos. We have this green tree that got lit by this artificial light. And when I stood there, I kind of like hoped for the shot to look like it does. I was really glad when I saw in the scan that it turned out like this because this is more or less exactly how it looked like there. Um, maybe the shot is a little bit warmer than the real scene, but I think this additional color adds to it. And I really didn't put any additional saturation in the shot. This is how it came out from the film from the scan. Next up is a shot during daylight, but indoors where ISO 800 comes in very handy. What we see here are brown leather sofas that are rendered beautifully, this brown. I think also here it is a little bit more exaggerated than in real life and a little bit more yellowish than I remember it. But I think it is beautiful and I think that the colors are gorgeous. It shows me how well I could trust Cinestill 800T in indoor situations like this in the future. Last but not least, the sundown. I had to do it. When I had my first roll loaded in my Leica M6, we had a gorgeous sundown with a very kitsch but dramatic evening sky. Look at this. These purple, orange, yellow and light blue tones against the shadow of the tree are just amazing. When I saw this scene, I was so lucky to have the camera with me and to take this shot. This also shows me that I can use this film even in sundown situations if I have it already loaded in the camera before I go on a nighttime shoot. All of the shots that you've just seen I took last week during the course of two days, so I was really, really lucky with the weather, especially this amazing sundown and uh, being at an event where I could try to film indoors a little bit and also still being lucky that there was no rain or freezing temperatures which will hit us here in Zurich pretty soon I guess. Generally I must say I really like the film and I'm looking forward to shooting more of it. Maybe Christmas time is the next opportunity for me here in Zurich when we have the Christmas lights up and the shop windows are decorated and we have these Christmas markets but I'm also looking forward to shooting this film in cities like New York or Tokyo or Bangkok.
Let me know in the comments below what you think of the film, uh, where you are using it, what you really like about the film or you don't like about the film or any recommendations for me to try out when I'm shooting the film the next time. What I didn't mention earlier was I was shooting the film at box speed, so 800 ISO. I didn't over or underexpose it in any way, maybe I will try that in the future, but for now I'm very happy shooting it at um, ISO 800. My little channel also recently hit the 1000 subscribers mark. Thank you so much guys for making this happen and supporting my channel with likes, comments and subscriptions. It really starts to feel like a little community now and it motivates me to continue. I'm so grateful for all of the contributions. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something. For me it was a lot of fun to make this video and to go through the shots again, talk a little bit about them and my thoughts behind them and what I think of the results. That's it for this video, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.